Cadmium and lead in chocolate. How does it get in? What can be done? Long-term exposure to heavy metals, cadmium and lead results in nervous system damage, immune system suppression and kidney disease. So it's kind of worrying to chocolate addicts like me to discover that chocolate products in the USA contain levels of heavy metals high enough to cause harm in consumers who eat them regularly. It's likely that chocolate in other countries is also affected. Dark chocolate, which is usually considered more healthful than other chocolate because of its lower sugar content and higher concentration of beneficial components, is the worst for heavy metal contamination. Drats. Contamination levels explored. Last year, the US consumer group Consumer Reports surveyed 28 dark chocolate bars. They found heavy metals in all the bars and very concerning levels in 23 of the bars. That's 82%. The survey's authors said at the time, for 23 of the bars, eating just an ounce a day would put an adult over a level that public health authorities and consumer reports experts say may be harmful for at least one of those heavy metals. Five of the bars were above those levels for both cadmium and lead. In the wake of the publishing of those survey results, many of the brands accused of having too high levels have been sued by consumers in the U.S., The same consumer group has again surveyed chocolate, this time expanding beyond chocolate bars and testing 48 samples from seven product categories, cocoa powder, chocolate chips, milk chocolate bars, and mixes for brownies, chocolate cake, and hot chocolate. The results of this most recent survey were published last week. The group used California's maximum allowable dose levels for lead and cadmium in non-chocolate foods set at half a microgram per day and 4.1 microgram per day respectively, uh, plus their serving sizes for safety comparisons. Why use non-chocolate levels? California limits for heavy metals in chocolate foods were made less stringent than other foods after legal action by the U.S. National Confectioners Association in 2018. The recent survey again found worrisome levels of cadmium or lead in chocolate products. One third of the 48 products had worrisome levels and some products contained more than twice as much as acceptable limits. For example, a one ounce serving of Perugina 85% premium dark chocolate exceeded California's maximum allowable dose level MADL for lead by a factor of five. Evolved Signature Dark 72% chocolate bar contained more than twice as much lead as the MADL and one and a half times as much cadmium as the MADL. The brand Hershey's was called out for problematic results for its cocoa powder, milk chocolate and dark chocolate. There's no suggestion that any of the products failed to meet legal limits. The USA does not have federal legal limits for heavy metals in most foods. The National Confectioners Association responded by referring to its past legal battles in which it successfully fought for amendments to Californian limits, saying, An expert investigation conducted through our prior California Proposition 65 settlement concluded that cadmium and lead are present in cocoa and chocolate due to soil and that bean cleaning during processing cocoa beans reduces lead and cadmium in chocolate products. Right. The US FDA also pretended unconcern, saying chocolate is a minor source of exposure to these contaminants, cadmium and lead, internationally. Does that mean some heavy metal vulnerable populations get more lead exposure from poisonous water pipes than chocolate? Probably. Does that make it okay to have high levels in chocolate, which some of us binge on? Nope. But there is a silver lining. Consumer Reports also tested the 48 chocolate samples for arsenic and mercury, and those results were fine. How does heavy metal get into chocolate? If you're a food scientist, you're probably already shaking your head saying, but it's impossible to completely eliminate heavy metals from cocoa supply chains. And you're not wrong. But read on because even the National Confectioners Association agree that there are effective strategies for reducing levels in chocolate. In other words, high levels are 100% preventable. Phew! Cocoa growers and chocolate manufacturers can act to prevent high levels of contamination. 
Cadmium gets into chocolate because it's present in cocoa beans. The cocoa plant takes up cadmium from soil through its roots and the cadmium ends up in the nibs or the centres of the cocoa beans from which chocolate is made. Cadmium is present as a natural component of soils in some areas and is also a man-made contaminant of soils. Latin American and Caribbean cocoa growing regions can have higher levels of cadmium than other areas. Lead gets into chocolate through contamination of cocoa beans after harvesting. During fermenting and drying processes, it's not taken up from soils through the roots of cocoa plants. Lead contamination is present in soil, dust and other airborne industrial pollutants which stick to mucilage on the beans while they're fermenting. What can be done? A report written by a panel of experts and published by As You Sew, which is a shareholder advocacy nonprofit, and the National Confectioners Association, describes methods for, for reducing levels of cadmium and lead in chocolate. Some of the highest confidence strategies from their report are listed. That is, the strategies are listed below. The report was published in 2018. I wonder if these recommendations have already been implemented in the supply chains of brands which fed poorly in the recent consumer reports tests or not. Cadmium level reductions can be achieved by blending beans or liquor, and that is blending high cadmium batches with low cadmium batches, not purchasing beans from regions with high phytoavailable cadmium soils, and there are also recommendations for farmers and growers, which include stop planting cocoa orchards in regions with high cadmium phytoavailability, use soil amendments to increase soil pH, use plant grafting techniques to reduce cadmium uptake by cocoa plants, find plant varieties which accumulate less cadmium. Lead contamination can be reduced by protecting cocoa beans from contact with dirt, dust and other aerial contamination during fermenting and drying, prevent contamination of whole wet beans during transport, establish bean cleaning or winnowing practices to reduce lead contamination, test surfaces of cocoa beans for lead contamination at the point of purchase, make sure painted surfaces which contact the beans don't contain lead, and use irrigation water that is free from lead. In short, two surveys have found worrying levels of lead and cadmium in a significant proportion of chocolate products in the USA. Lead and cadmium get into chocolate via cocoa beans. Cadmium gets into cocoa beans before harvest by plants taking cadmium from the soil into the beans. Lead gets into cocoa beans during post-harvest processing, including fermenting and drying. There are strategies for making chocolate with low levels of lead and cadmium. It's unclear whether the brands that performed poorly in the surveys are using these strategies. And as always, I've included links to all my sources in the email and the post.